Good afternoon, and welcome to our celebration of Holy Mass. Our gathering song is hymn number 535, O God Beyond All Praising, 535. Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace and peace of the Lord be with you. Amen. Brothers and sisters, let us cross the threshold into these sacred mysteries, acknowledging our sin in light of the merciful love of the Savior who embraces us. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ. You were seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who founded all the commands of your sacred law upon love of you and of our neighbor, grant that by keeping your precepts we may merit to attain eternal life. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Book of Wisdom. The wicked say, let us beset the just one, because he is obnoxious to us. He sets himself against our doings, reproaches us for transgressions of the law, and charges us with violations of our training. 
Let us see whether his words be true. Let us find out what will happen to him. For if the just one be the Son of God, God will defend him and deliver him from the hand of his foes. With revilement and torture, let us put the just one to the test, that we may have proof of his gentleness and try his patience. Let us condemn him to a shameful death, for according to his own words, God will take care of him. The word of the Lord. reading from the letter of St. James. Beloved, where jealousy and selfish ambition exist, there is disorder and every foul practice. But the wisdom from above is first of all pure, then peaceable, gentle, compliant, full of mercy and good fruits without inconstancy or insincerity. And the fruit of righteousness is sown in peace for those who cultivate peace. Where do the wars and where do the conflicts among you come from? Is it not from your passions that make war within your members? You covet, but do not possess. You kill and envy, but you cannot obtain. You fight and wage war. You do not possess because you do not ask. You ask, but do not receive because you ask wrongly to spend it on your passions. The word of the Lord. be with 
with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Jesus and his disciples left from there and began a journey through Galilee, but he did not wish anyone to know about it. He was teaching his disciples and telling them, the Son of Man is to be handed over to men and they will kill him. And three days after his death, the Son of Man will rise. But they did not understand the saying and were afraid to question him. And they came to Capernaum, and once inside the house, he began to ask them, what were you arguing about? along the way, and they remained silent. They had been discussing among themselves on the way who was the greatest. And then he sat down, called the twelve, and said to them, If anyone wishes to be first, he shall be the last of all, and the servant of all. And then taking a child and placing it in their midst, and putting his arms around it, he said to them, Whoever receives one child such as this in my name receives me, and whoever receives me receives not me, but the one who sent me. The Gospel of the Lord. Lord Today we have the second of the three passion predictions of Jesus. There certainly can never be said by any disciple that there wasn't full disclosure in the message of Jesus and those who would follow him. In last Sunday's revelation, he said, take up your cross and follow me. There's, you're not gonna circumvent darkness and shadows and evil in this world. And today, he doesn't point to the cross with its call to be willing to be powerless and to endure suffering, but this time he pulls a child into the midst of it and speaks about the characteristics of receptivity and humility. A child in that society didn't amount to anything. It had no rights. It was a non-person. And Jesus puts that child right there. Unless you're willing to not be counted, you're not worried about what are people saying and thinking about. In other words, unless you're not always focused on upward mobility and never lose downward mobility, the ability to notice those who are in need, that which is a revelation and can teach us even from the most unexpected sources, like the wisdom of a child. Oftentimes, I've known many parents have shared with me that a point was driven home by a simple observation or question of a child. So Jesus would have us pay attention to unlikely people and unlikely situations if we're to be a disciple. We hear in the first reading today from the Book of Wisdom a further reflection on what we heard last week. Isaiah was talking about the suffering servant centuries before Christ. He will give his back to those who beat him, his cheeks to those who plucked his beard. And today we hear that the people are saying about this servant, he's obnoxious to us. He sets himself against our way. Let's dismiss him. Let's put him to the test. Let's torture him and see if God rescues him. That sound familiar? That was to be what was going on around the suffering servant. Last week, we heard the suffering servant. We heard of his willingness, his not running away from pain. Remember I said, he, the one who the, the soldier said, if you're the son of God, come off the cross and save yourself. And Jesus stayed on the cross to save us. But today, in wisdom, we hear what was going on around this suffering servant. Why, do, why did he bother people? He's obnoxious to us. He sets himself against us. In other words, he says things i rather not hear. I'll never forget some, one day, someone told me they had stopped going to church because every time they did, they felt guilty. Well, that's nice. If you have reason to feel guilty, feel guilty. 
If you're carrying around a burden and you don't want to feel guilty, good. Admit your sin, be forgiven, and then stop being guilty. But they felt guilty. And listen to this. Because all those things that God says in the Bible, well, they make me feel guilty. God shouldn't be judging people. <laughs> really? I thought it was God is the only one who should be judging people. And by the way, in Jesus, God did all that he could to make sure we can be forgiven. We can be cleansed of the reason of our guilt. We can move forward so that judgment is trumped by mercy. But God is just. And therefore, if we are not willing to immerse ourselves in mercy, then we will indeed suffer the consequences. God is with us in all things. In Jesus, God enters into human condition so that if we're mourning, we think of Jesus who weeps. If we are being falsely accused, we think of Jesus. If we are abandoned because it's not popular to be around us, we think of Jesus. And the list could go on and on and on. But the psalm that was sung today reminds us of what we're called to do. The psalmist was singing, the Lord upholds my life. God will not abandon or forsake me. He will defend me. God is my helper. He will uphold me. When was the psalmist saying this? After all the problems went away? No, in the middle of them. In the middle of them. In the kingdom falling apart. In wars, one against the other. In everything seeming to be done. But I will keep on because the Lord upholds my life. Not my position or my clout or because I'm better than or first, like the apostles were, were arguing about. But because like a child, I trust, I believe. I don't worry about the past. I don't worry about the future. I savor the moment. Like the frustration when you're trying to lead a kid somewhere and they stop because they see a bug. And you're going, hurry up, hurry up. But why does the bug? That's an important lesson to not be in such a hurry or to be standing back, but to be in the moment. Jesus chose a child for lots of reasons. But when things are not happening the way we want, when we're in going through pain, what do we do? Do we rebel against it? Do we start verbally fighting it? Do we wage battle and get folks around us to wage war? Or could we truly say, hey, the Lord's upholding my life. I know I will not be put to shame. I know he will vindicate me. He is my helper. God is my helper. And so the scriptures today invite us to think about that leap of faith, which is the sign of true disciples. Not saying, if you want my faith and love, Lord, then follow my plan for my life and my checklist. It's not easy. John Paul II put it well when he said, genuine love is demanding. But its beauty lies precisely in the demands that it makes. Only those able to make demands on themselves in the name of love. And that's why we look to Jesus. Make demands on ourselves in the name of love. Real love. The love of the neighbor who leads us to say, Father, forgive them, they know not what to do. Et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Only those able to make demands on themselves in the name of love can then demand love from others. No, indeed, Jesus doesn't give any kind of false disclaimers. Last week, if you want to follow me, embrace the cross. Don't try to run away from it. If you want to be powerful, seek to be the least. If you want to truly be wise and make your way through all the stuff of life, look at a child and imitate it. And realize that sometimes in the simplest, you'll find the most profound. And by the demands of love, you'll discover a depth of love that you never knew. I leave that thought with you. As John Paul II, who was an avid hiker, put it so well. 
Indeed, the way Jesus shows you is not easy. Rather, it's like a path winding up a mountain. Don't lose heart. The steeper the road, the faster it rises toward ever wider horizons. I believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, the maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. In confidence, let us bring our needs before the Lord. For all leaders in our church to be courageous in the proclamation of truth and protection of the most vulnerable, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those preparing to pledge life and love in the sacrament of marriage, and for those who have been recently married, especially here in our community, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who are taking part in our RCIA inquiry sessions and seeking to be attentive to the presence of Christ in their lives and his invitation to explore our Catholic faith, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our families to truly embrace their call to be the domestic church and form children by the authentic living out of faith in the daily routine of our family life, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer for the grace of downward mobility, to be able to notice and act upon the needs we see around us with humility and as an expression of gratitude to God for all he has given us, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the souls of all our departed loved ones, especially Thomas Ryan Sr., for whom this Mass is offered, that through the mercy of God, they may know the fullness of eternal life and joy we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the needs in our hearts and those of one another, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. All this we ask confidently through Christ our Lord. Please join together in singing number 384, The Summons, 384.
Pray, brethren, my sacrifice and yours be acceptable to God, our Almighty Father. Receive with favor, O Lord, we pray, the offerings of your people, that what they profess with devotion and faith, they may have through heavenly mysteries, through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. And let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always, everywhere to give you thanks, Father of mercies, eternal God. For you've given us Jesus Christ, your Son, as our Redeemer and Lord. He always showed compassion for children and the poor, for the sick and sinners, and became a neighbor to the oppressed and the afflicted. By word and deed, he announced to the world that you are our Father and that you care for all of us as your sons and daughters. And so with all the angels and saints, we exalt and bless your name and we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. indeed holy and to be glorified, O God, who love the human race, and who always walk with us on the journey of life. Blessed indeed is your Son who is present in our midst and we're gathered by his love. And when, as once for the disciples, so now for us, he opens the scriptures and breaks the bread. And therefore, Father most merciful, we ask that you send forth your Holy Spirit to sanctify these gifts of bread and wine, that they become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, on the night of the Last Supper, he took bread. And giving you thanks, he broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you.
then in a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, gave you thanks, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, Holy Father, as we celebrate the memory of Christ, your Son, our Savior, whom you led through his passion and death on the cross to the glory of the resurrection, and whom you seated at your right hand, we proclaim the work of your love until he comes again, and we offer you the bread of life, the chalice of blessing. Look with favor on the oblation of your church, in which we show forth the paschal sacrifice of Christ that has been handed on to us. Grant that by the power of the spirit of your love, we may be counted now and until the day of eternity among the members of your Son, in whose body and blood we have communion. Bring your church, O Lord, to perfect faith and charity together with Francis, our Pope, Peter, our Bishop, with all bishops, priests, and deacons, and the entire people you've made your own. Open our eyes to the needs of our brothers and sisters and inspire in us words and actions to comfort those who labor in our burden. Help us to serve them truly after the example of Christ and at his command. And may your church stand as a living witness to truth and freedom, to peace and justice, that all people may be raised up to a new hope. Remember our brothers and sisters who've fallen asleep in the peace of your Christ and all the dead whose faith you alone have known. Admit them to rejoice in the light of your face and in the resurrection give them fullness of life. And grant also to us when our pilgrimage is done that we come to an eternal dwelling place and live with you forever. There in communion with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the apostles and martyrs and all the saints, we shall praise and exalt you through Jesus, your Son. Through him and with him and in him, O God, almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Savior's command and form a divine teaching, we dare to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin, safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you, look not at our sins but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. We offer each other now a sign of peace.
Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
We remind all men of the parish that the men's retreat, authentic masculinity, is next weekend, and Monday is the deadline if you have yet to register. In the bulletin, you'll find an email or phone number to use to do that. Uh, there are also some blue sheets still at the main entrance of the church that have um, the information on the schedule and the weekend. Also, to, uh, tomorrow night at 6.30 or Monday night at 6.30 are the parent introduction nights as we begin faith formation. All families should be registered by now for the Bring It Home program. Uh, if not, come a little earlier and materials will be there that night. So the details are in the bulletin for, next, uh, for this Sunday at 6.30 or Monday at 6.30. The small groups that we'll be uh, discussing, reflecting on the Mass, uh, gathered around Bishop Barron's new series uh, begin a week from Monday. Uh, we are uh, happy to say that some of the groups have already reached capacity, so unfortunately they are closed. But if you have not registered and might be interested, the bulletin uh, has the info to contact Brenda very early in the week, before Wednesday, or it'll be too late. And thanks again to so many parishioners who are enabling us to have so many different groups available uh, Monday through Thursday, evenings, daytime, uh, and all those who are uh, participating. This year, as we're in, under construction in our new parish center, we will not be having a, a parish fair, but we will be having the grand raffle. It is an essential part of the parish budget. And so there's an article in the bulletin about it. If anyone is a business owner uh, or would like to do this in memory of someone, we do have an entire cash prize raffle. And if you'd like to donate uh, toward that, whatever amount, then those are listed on the ticket uh, for remembrance or to advertise your business. So if you're interested in that, just let me know. Uh, we hope to get those printed in a couple of weeks and then out for an all-out parish effort. Uh, the money we receive from the sale of our Lafayette Road property is going toward the construction now and in phase three. So we still have operating budget. We are not on easy street. And the budget has built into it funds coming from this annual event. So uh, please notice the details in the bulletin and we'll have some more on that for you. Today in the bulletin, there's a page called Spotlight on Women's Ministry that talks about our walking with purpose and other initiatives that are going to be taken for women of our parish. These uh, Bible studies, which Lisa spoke about before mass, are a wonderful opportunity for women of all ages. There's one for those who are coming for the first time, and there's another for those who are returning. Today, in the back of the church to your left, there's a table set up, and there are folks there to give you more information or to help you sign up. So a full page in the bulletin. I highly encourage you to read it through and then stop by the table. Uh, it's going to be starting in just a couple of weeks. There's a lot more detail about a lot more now that we have the expanded bulletin. It's important that you read it carefully. But before we conclude the Mass today, I am happy to announce that I have been thinking and praying for a couple of years now about a, a position to add to our pastoral staff. Given the way our parish is growing, the age group of our growth, um, I feel this is very vital, uh, not only to do programming, but also to integrate in the life of the whole community. And so uh, you'll see in the bulletin uh, some pictures and so a little write-up with more detail. You'll also see our thanks to a generous benefactor. This position was uh, not planned in the budget, but that benefactor is making it possible for us to have it and is funding it. And for that, I'm very, very grateful. And so um, I'm happy to announce that Corpus Christi Parish will now have a young adult minister who will be ministering particularly to our parishioners who are 18 uh, to 30-something and I'll let you tell him a little bit more, but I'm very happy that uh, David Perella accepted uh, my invitation to serve as young adult minister for our community. And I just invite Dave to take a moment uh, to give you a little bit about himself. Afternoon, everybody. Um, promise I won't take too much of your time. I know it's a beautiful day out there and we all probably wanna get out there and enjoy the fall. Um, but as Father said, I just accepted the role of young adult minister here in the parish. Um, so just so you all aren't wondering who's that weird guy up at the altar, um, you know, give you an idea of who I am. Um, so I'm 24, 24 years old from Bedford, New Hampshire. Um, been living on the seacoast since 
2012 when I went to the University of New Hampshire. Um, I graduated in 2016, just two years ago, with a degree in mechanical engineering, and I currently work at the Portsmouth Naval Shipyard. I'm a nuclear engineer over there. Um, but in the last year or so, um, I've been able to connect with Father Gary and with this parish and get more involved, and I'm just so blessed to have all of you. Um, honestly, the faces that I get to see when I'm here serving and the people I've met through this parish have really changed my life. Um, I've been a Christian my entire life, but um, being a Christian is kind of describes, the quotes are really around the start of my life. I really didn't take my faith that seriously growing up. Um, I had Catholic uh, parents, um, Catholic father, Protestant mother, um, and I really treated God kind of like a, a grocery store. You know, I would go to him when I needed something. I'd ask God to convince my parents to buy me, you know, a nice present for Christmas, things like that, um, but never really had a relationship with Christ. Um, and then when I went to high school, I actually was diagnosed with a, a, a medical condition that really turned my life upside down. Um, and I really started to ask myself a lot deeper questions about who is this God guy, and is he really real, and what does that mean for me? And I'm, I'm blessed to say that God met me where I was in a really powerful way. Um, but that's a whole other story for a different time. I don't want to keep you guys here for hours. Um, but God really turned my life upside down, and I went to a Catholic high school in Nashua, New Hampshire, and I was surrounded by a lot of really incredible Christians who helped me to appreciate my Catholic faith in a really real and deep way. Um, going to college, I didn't have that community around me, um, and I really kind of fell away. I'm sure all of you here know how busy and crazy life can get, and you only need to, you know, look at our societies today, watch an hour of television to find out that God isn't necessarily the priority for a lot of people. Um, and that was the case for me. I mean, God, despite having showed up for me so big in high school, I really fell away from my faith. And then, again, he swooped right in and met me where I was at and surrounded me with a lot of incredible Christians, um, great friends of mine who, from my junior year on, really inspired me to, you know, wow, that God guy, he is there, and I want to be more serious about this. And they, they turned my entire last four years around. I've had the chance to do a lot of ministry and service. Um, in all across the United States, in Africa. Um, I've really been blessed with a lot of incredible experiences through that Christian friend group, and that community is, I think, so essential for young people nowadays. And so coming out of college, um, I was searching for a community, and I never had that Catholic community at college. It was a Protestant ministry, but I still missed that Catholic piece that I had in high school until a parishioner here, um, I don't know how many of you know the LeBlanc family, um, but one of the LeBlancs met me uh, at a church actually in York, Maine, where I was living at the time, and was like, oh, you got to go check out Corpus Christi Parish, and I was like, what in the heck's Corpus Christi Parish? Never even heard of it. Um, and little did I know, it was right down the road, and met Father Gary, and he uh, instantly was, you know, hey, would you, like to, would you like to meet? Would you like to get dinner, get more plugged in? And it's been a huge answer to my prayers. Um, so over the last year, I've been getting more involved. I've been serving in Frasati Fraternity, which is a group for young adults in the parish, young men. Um, and accepting this role, what I'll really be doing is I'll be a point man to try and just inspire other young adults to, to kind of get plugged in with a lot of the programs that we have in the parish. There's a lot of amazing things going on, and young adults in general tend to be a little more standoffish, I think, to getting involved, and start, tend to think, you know, somebody should do that, but then they don't, they don't do it. They just say somebody should do it. So having the experiences that I've had of seeing what a community can do to, but having a lot of strong Christians around you to inspire you and go forward can do. I'm hoping to kind of work with the young adults in the parish um, to inspire and to motivate to start planning more programs and to connect people with the programs that we have. Um, in addition to that, I'll be continuing to develop for Saudi Fraternity, and I'll be working uh, with RCIA and the Coming Home Ministries that we have. And it's really going to be a kind of a grassroots movement of building up the young adults that we have in the parish. Not me saying, hey, we should do these things, but them coming to me with what they think should, we should be done, and then developing programs as well myself as we go along. So that's a little bit about me and about what I'll be seeking to do. Just thank you all so much for having me and uh, really appreciate your prayers uh, for me as I go into this process and start to develop what it's gonna look like. So thank you all so much and see you around. And once again, Dave, I am very grateful um, for all you've brought to our community since you've been here, just since November, and now all that you're willing to embrace. Um, once again, moving us toward a future full of hope. The biggest reason to have hope and joy is that we have a growing young adult community 
that we need to minister more effectively too. This is what I mean about moving from maintenance to mission. There are many communities who wouldn't need such a position because those they minister to are the unreachable generation in the church. That's not true here. Let us pray. Graciously raise up, O Lord, those who renew with this sacrament, that we may come to possess your redemption, both in mystery and in the manner of our life, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth glorifying the Lord by your life. Please join together in singing number 615, Lord whose love and humble service, number 615. Lord whose love 